uh, following Judge Annalisa Torres's ruling that programmatic XRP sales did not qualify as securities, the SEC filed an interlocutory appeal with the court. This meant that the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission did not agree with the ruling. And while the interlocutory appeal has been approved by the court, pro-XRP lawyer John Deaton has called the move laughably as he dismantles the SEC's appeal. In a post titled The Irony of Interlocutory Appeal, Deaton shared his thoughts on the SEC's interlocutory appeal. The post, which was published on Thursday, September 28, on the Crypto Law website, explains how the appeal filing may end up being in favor of Ripple. And the, the, the pro-XRP uh, lawyer explains that uh, Judge Torres granting the motion for appeal was expected, and the reasoning was that such an appeal would grant the judge an opportunity to clarify her reasoning for uh, ruling in favor of Ripple. Uh, and uh, according to D10, uh, Judge Torres will be able to uh, address statements that have been made by Judge Rockoff, the judge uh, in charge of the SEC versus Terraform's Labs lawsuit regarding her ruling. With the right to file a formal motion for an interlocutory appeal granted, Judge Torres can now distinguish between her actual ruling in the Ripple case versus Judge Rockoff purported it to be, Ethan explained. Uh, furthermore, the pro-XRP lawyer said it was the SEC who categorized the different sales, not Judge Torres. This means that Judge Torres actually ruled on what the SEC had presented before her and not something that wasn't part of the case. And the post by Deaton also touches on what would happen if either Ripple or the SEC were to emerge victorious on the interlocutory filing. On one hand, <laughs> the SEC winning uh, would mean that the case lands before Judge Torres once again and she would have to analyze the facts of the case using the Howey test. However, Deaton strongly believes that the regulator would not win the appeal. Even if the Second Circuit disagrees with Judge Torres' analysis of Howey's third prong, the SEC does not lend its summary judgment, um, Deaton explains. Instead, Judge Torres would then apply um, the investment prong and um, the common enterprise prong of the Howey test, uh, again, further prolonging the case. Um, uh, on the other hand, uh, if Ripple were to emerge victorious, uh, then the case would still find its way back to uh, Judge Torres, but this time around it would be uh, n headed for trial, and following the outcomes, uh, VTEM predicts more appeals on uh, all the issues addressed. Um, in the end, it just it just results in a prolonged and drawn out fight. Uh, as as Deaton mentioned in the post, even if an early appeal were to be granted in the case, it would uh, still draw out uh, the legal battle for another 1.5 to two years. Um, this could suggest that the Ripple versus SEC uh, case could continue into 2025.